This video is made possible by Skillshare.com. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to create a particle stimulated slideshow animation inside of After Effects using Trap Code Particular. I am Nikhil from dopemotions.com and without any further ado, let's get started. Now before we begin with the tutorial, let me take a second and tell you guys about Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes on motion design, video editing, illustrations and more. You can join any class, try any project and take them anywhere, anytime. You can learn, collaborate, even teach a class of your own if you wish to. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to high quality classes from expert working in their field so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities and do the work you love. Click the link in the description below and get your 2 months of Skillshare premium access for free. Alright, so here we are in After Effects. Let's start by creating a new composition. Let's call this Particles Slideshow. 1920 by 1080, 30 FPS, 10 seconds long, hit OK. Then let's create one more composition which is going to be our media placeholder where we can drag any image or video whatever that we want to use in this project. I'm going to call this media. Hit OK. And here I have few images that I downloaded from unsplash.com. So if you want the same images, I'll try to provide the link in the description if I find them. But you can basically just type in colorful images and you should find them on an unsplash. So here we have our media. Let's drag and drop that media into a new composition. All right, so now we have media 2. I'm going to hit enter and call this scene. Let's go into our scene composition and there we have our media comp. Let's create a new adjustment layer. Call this extract. Now what we're going to do is we're going to extract the luminance value of the black. So to do that, I'm going to go into effects and preset and type in extract. Drag and drop it onto a new adjustment layer. At the very beginning of our timeline, let's bring out the black point all the way up to 255. Create a keyframe. Go to around, let's go to around 3 seconds forward in time and bring that down to 0. So now you can see we have a really nice reveal. And by the way, it is transparent. So this is what I'm going for. Now the reveal depends on the image that you use. So if I replace this image with a different image, so I'll go into image folder and let's drag and drop this really cool image. Let's scale this down. So it fits up the comp. There we go. And if I go back into my scene comp, you can see the reveal is a bit different depending on the black values of the scene. So for now, I'm just going to hide this. I'm going to use this image. Let's go into the particle slideshow composition that is our main comp and drag the scene composition just like so. So we have a simple animation. Create a new solid called this particles. Hit OK. And we will be using a plugin called Trap Code Particular. So in the effects and preset section, I'm going to add, I'm going to type in actually Particular. So we should find it and drag and drop it onto a new solid. And this plugin basically generates some nice 3D particles which we can manipulate it and do some crazy different stuff with this. And I have created many tutorials using this plugins. I'll mention the playlist down in the description so you can go and check out all the tutorials made using this plugin. All right, so now let's go into the particle section, go into the emitter section actually. And firstly, change the emitter type from point to layer because we will be using this layer to generate particles, right? So I'll go into the layer emitter. Firstly, 
make sure the comp is 3D. Then go into the layer emitter. In the layer section, I'm going to select the scene. And in the layer sampling, I'm going to change this from particle birth to current time legacy. So now you can see we have some particles getting generated through our image, but that is not enough. So we need to increase the particles per second count. And I mean like a hell lot. So I'm going to go with 2 million particles. All right. And if I now play it, you can see we have millions of particles, right? Let's bring down the velocity to 50. So I think it's a bit too intense. Okay, that is looking good. Let's hop on to the particle master section. And we don't need any particle feather. So I'm going to bring this down to zero. For the particle size, I'll go with two. That should be enough. And particle size random, I'm going to keep it all the way up to 100. Size over life, I can select a default preset. So I'll go with this one. And now we have a nice particles. Now what I need to do is I want these particles to stop emitting after a certain time. So let's go at the very beginning of our timeline, go into the emitter section, create a keyframe on the particles per second, go 20 frames forward in time, set this to zero so that after 20 frames, the particles are going to stop emitting. So we have something like this looking very nice. Now let's go into the physics section and give this particles a little bit of reverse or negative gravity. So I'm going to keep it at minus eight so that the particles go up a bit. You can see just like that. Then go into the air section, turbulence field and increase the effect position to around 250. And for the scale, I'll bring this down to three. I can also go into the wind direction and set this to minus 400 so that the particles emit towards our camera. But we don't have any camera, so we need to create one. So right click, create a new camera. Keep it 35 millimeters, hit OK. Create a new null object, which is going to be our camera controller. Make it 3D and pattern the camera to this null object. So now we can animate a scene a little bit. So I'll hit P to bring down the position properties and Let's go at the very beginning, create a keyframe, hit R to bring down the rotation properties, Z rotation, create a keyframe and hit U so we can see just the keyframes. Now for the position and the rotation, for the rotation, I'll set this a bit just like maybe minus six, maybe that looks good. And just bring the position a bit closer, just like so. And then I'll go to around maybe five seconds, bring this up to plus six and zoom it in a bit, just like so. So we have a little bit of movement into our image. As you can see, this is starting to look really, really nice. Okay, that is looking great. Let's select the particle layer and hit control D to duplicate it. Go at the very beginning of the timeline and bring down the particles actually go into the emitter section and bring down the particles per second to around, I'll go with 6,000 and increase the particle size a bit. So let's close the emitter, go into particle size. Let's give it maybe five. Okay. So now we have some really nice and big particles. Also, I think I'm going to increase the, actually decrease the velocity a bit. So I'll go into the emitter again bring down the velocity to 25 that is half and yep i think this is looking pretty great now let's create a new adjustment layer bring this on the top and call this glow and let's add some glow i'll type in glow into the effects and preset section drag and drop that glow into a new adjustment layer set the threshold to around 90 percent and increase the glow radius really high maybe something like that and that is looking great you can also switch to 16 bits per channel if you want to get some really nice glow without any kind of color bendings and yeah that is looking absolutely great now you can also add some text and you know some really 
nice elements if you add if you want to add some more depth into the scene as you saw in the example so one more cool thing that you can do is add some optics compensation so I'll select it go into effects and preset and type in optics compensation drag and drop it reverse lens distortion and give it some really nice optics compensation so I'll start from a good number maybe somewhere around 25 create a keyframe go to 5 seconds and increase this just a touch like that so now we have a little bit of optic optics compensation onto our particles and this is looking really really nice now you can also use some videos if you want to or you can easily switch it to a different image and see how it looks so right here you can see we get some really crazy and amazing looking results and as you saw, it's very simple and easy to create. So that is a wrap for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did, then make sure to subscribe, comment and like and follow me on Instagram at dope.motions. I will see you guys in the next video. Till then, take care. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to stay raw, stay creative.